Okay, fifth graders, chapter 11, section 4. And uh, I don't know if you've noticed or not, but chapter 11 is actually a pretty short chapter. We've got this section, and I think one after this, maybe two at the most. So we're, uh, we're mostly done with this. Anyways, let's look at this, um, this section. Really, this is just all about word problems. And... Um, and you're, you're solving the word problems uh, by adding usually two prisms together. And you have to read what they're asking, what information they're asking. So let's look at this first example. It's a good example. It says the nature center has a large uh, bird cage called an aviary. That's, uh, that is a large bird cage, often the size of like a house, aviaries. It consists of two sections, each shaped like a rectangular prism. It says there needs to be 10 cubic feet of space for each bird. How many birds can the nature center have in the aviary? Well, figure that out. The first thing you need to do is figure out how much space they have. And so they got the, the dimensions right here. And you can see I kind of highlighted them in green, uh, green and red, actually. So um, if you look carefully um, down here in section B, uh, the large section is in green here, and it's 10 by 6 by 8. And so you can see there's a 10-foot length right here, and then a 6-foot, and then an 8-foot length. Um, and then the smaller section, I did that in red. And it's kind of hard to tell from the picture, but it looks like it cuts in about 4 feet right in here. Um, I, I, I was not impressed with the with the picture it was kind of hard to tell but they give those dimensions right here four by three by eight and so the volume of each one is is 96 plus 480 and so what do you get you get 576 cubic feet well you're not done that tells you the volume of the two combined prisms but you still need to figure out how many birds can fit in there and so they do that in section C here for you. It says divide, uh, um, divide uh, 576 by 10. And what do you get? You get 57.6. So um, you can't put 0.6 of a bird in a space. <laughs> you can't cut the bird up. So you would round down in a case like this, if you think about it. You, and so the answer is 57 birds, uh, not 50, not 58, it'd be 57. So uh, that was a good example. Let's look at uh, the convince me here. It says, Tom solved the problem by a different way. First, he found the total area of the floor, and then he multiplied by the height. Does his me method work? Well, if you, had a, if you had an object, let's say like that, and um, let's see here. Let me make myself a, an example here extend a little bit more there and I'll go like that and cut off that excess um, so you can't in this diagram you can't see the floor but you can see the um, the ceiling so to speak the top of it this area right here all right and if I gave you some dimensions if I said um, this was um, four feet and this was let's say three feet and this right here was um, 12 feet what's the area of this top section here the area equals um, and keep in mind that if we have the area of a top section, we also have the area of the bottom section that we can't see. Okay. So, um, if that, hopefully that makes sense to you guys. Um, so what's the area? Well, if, if this is three feet right here, let me change my color here. If this is three feet right here, this is going to be three feet. And then if this is 12 right here, then this will be 12. So to figure out the area, remember area equals area equals simply length times width. Well, um, 
what's 12 times 3? So it equals 36 feet. Remember, it's cubed because we're talking about area. So the area equals 36 feet squared. Actually, that looks like a 12. I probably shouldn't write it that way. Feet squared. All right. Now, if you know the area of the base or the top of a particular object, then all you need is the height. And what's the height of this particular object? It's four feet. So it'd be 36 times four. And then, um, and I come over here and let's see here, I can do this. It'd be um, 36 times four. Four times six is 24. Put down the four, carry the two. Four times three is 12, plus two more is 14. 144 feet cubed, because we're talking about area. So, um, so the whole area, undo that, the whole, the area inside of it, everything is 144 um, feet cubed. Um, volume equals, I might, I might have said area, volume equals 144 feet cubed. And let's see here, I want to make sure I did that right. Four times 24, put down the four, carry the two, 12, 13, 14. Yep, 144 feet cubed. All right. So um, you can put that in your own words right here, however you want, uh, briefly, how I explained it. And so, but essentially the answer is yes. Um, his, his method did work. Um, okay. Uh, do you understand on the guided practice how can you find the volume of the china cabinet um, what is the height of the top section of the china cabinet well this would be the the top section right here and they're asking for the height um, let me just point out something to you the entire height is seven they give us that and then they give us this section right here, which is three feet. Well, if this is three, what's this? Remember, the whole thing is seven. So um, if that's three feet, then this has to be four feet, this section right here, that part. And that's one of the questions they ask. What is the height of the top section of the china cabinet? Explain. Well, again, you can put it in your own words because um, the bottom height is three. So you'd subtract three from seven, which leaves you four. All right, and then it says for number three here, it says find the volume of the china cabinet. And you guys can do that. And then you guys should be able to do four and five here also. Um, let's see here, let's move down. Independent practice, um, four and five. Uh, six, I'm looking at six and seven here. You should be able to do those. So, um, built a house of building blocks. What's the volume of the house? So, well, I guess you would include this little figure right here. Whoops. Um, in that answer, although I'm not entirely sure because those are solid blocks, but yeah, I think you would include that. Um, okay, so let's move down here to the independent practice. Oh no, the, probably the problem solving, sorry. Um, floor plan, height of the bedroom is nine feet. Okay, so this is the floor plan. So here's something that shows you the area area of a bedroom and, and including the closet. But pay attention now, they gave you the height of the bedroom. So you can't see it, but they gave you, you know, the, the height of the walls. So with that information, you should be able to figure out the volume. And the height of the closet is different. It's a couple feet less. That one's seven feet instead of nine feet. 
So again, you're gonna have to figure out the area for two different objects using the height that they gave you um, for the bedroom and the height for the closet. Uh, number 10, an office building surrounds a rectangular open air courtyard. What's the volume of the building? This is kind of a, a interesting one. Think about this. They're asking you for the volume of this building here. So what you're going to have to do is figure out the volume of the building. Then you've got to figure out the volume of the courtyard and subtract it from the volume of the building. And then you would have the volume of the building. All right. Well, look at it this way. Um, if I had a, um, you know, let's just say I had a rectangle here and I wanted to know the volume of this rectangle, not including um, this piece right here. How would you do that? Well, of course, if I gave you the dimensions of each one, uh, you would subtract, you would figure out the volume of the large object and then you would subtract the, the, well, I said volume, then you would subtract the area of the blue object from it. So, um, and again, this is an example, I'm just talking about area, but the same thing applies when we're talking about volume. Okay. Um, let's see here. Yeah, you guys can do 11. All right. All right, that's it. Um, I will see you guys tomorrow.